Hi everyone, it's Mark here again. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network and we're rapidly approaching 90,000 members around the world across our five LinkedIn groups. So please do check those out. They'll be listed wherever this appears. But this is the best fun of the job for me. This is where I get to meet and interview our full members. So I'm delighted that John Holmes has joined me today. John, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. We've had several conversations and it's been great fun, but this is going to be even more fun, I think you'll find. It's, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> it's uh, it's an opportunity for me to introduce you to all of the other members, um, ask you a bit about the work that you do, who your champagne referral might be, so that we can make sure that you're connected, as connected, as well connected as possible. Um, so where are you based, John? Remind me. So I'm based in a tiny village called Doveridge, which is in the uh, heart of the Peak District, right in the middle of the Midlands. And it's a lovely place to be. I'm very close to the, the, the hills and the lakes of the Peak District. Nice. Lovely. I'm I'm down south in Essex, close to the to the Thames. Um, but now that that sounds yeah. One of the I got told off actually recently. You'll love this. Um, when I meet people online, especially if they're overseas, I ask them to post their address in the chat, mm -hmm. uh, which I've subsequently realised is probably not terribly PC. Um, <laughs> And then I go and stand outside their house on Google Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with uh, Bill Bruner, who's one of our full members. He's got a theatre in his back garden in Colorado. Oh, wow. Um, and so I was able to go and have a look. But my wife pointed out that that's a, a little bit stalky. <laughs> so <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. But um, I, do, I do when I'm talking with people from different places. Um, I ask them to share images particularly if it's somewhere very different, like Malaysia. Um, or recently, I've been working with uh, colleagues in the Maldives. Uh, mm. And I asked them to share images of, you know, uh, what it's like uh, in, in their locality. Um, and, and it's lovely to see and fascinating. And, it is. Uh, yes, yeah. I think you've probably met Sarah Hunt on some of our meetings. Sarah used, was the general manager at the National Theatre, but is now... Um, a, a creative performance coach based in the Bahamas and um, she joined a call once and I complimented her on the lovely background that she had where did she find that image of a Caribbean beach and she said no Mark that is actually a real picture <laughs> <laughs> brilliant so excellent so that mention of working with people overseas brings us nicely to a, a, to a, a conversation about the work that you do, John. I know I've been, I've, I'm familiar with with much of it, but why don't why don't you just explain briefly the work that you do and, and a little bit about your background for it? Yes, thank you, Mark. Well, I usually start with my background just to give a little bit of context, and and um, so so that looks like um, for for twenty years or so, uh, I was managing theatres, concert halls, festivals, and then. Um, uh, museums and arts and tourism services, um, often in London and the Southeast, and then moving up to the, the Midlands from 2010. And from there, I, I, I graduated on, I suppose, into the space of uh, being a mentor and a coach to creative industries, leaders or founders or entrepreneurs. Uh, I found myself very much drawn to that space of um, supporting and helping others who are working in this space. So what I do these days is um, all related to that. Um, I'm the Managing Director at Advantage Creative, uh, and as an organisation that started life uh, as investing into creative startups. Um, and these days we use most of that expertise that we developed in mentoring and coaching and helping entrepreneurs build a bigger stronger business as, as i mentioned so sometimes that's one-to-one -one. i really like working with people who especially have a creative business that they're already managing and they want to grow it to the next level and often I find where I'm most 
help to people is in thinking about how do they raise that investment or the funding or the finance to take their creative business to, to the next level. Um, so I'm especially interested in all kinds of things like angel or equity investment, but loan funding and crowdfunding and grant funding, and all of those different tools in the toolbox that can help people grow a business. Sounds brilliant. And it's great work that you're doing because we, we need that kind of expertise and we don't, the, the left and the right brain doesn't always um, work in the same way. So bringing that commercial acumen to um, what is a creative um, process is, is, is really, really useful that we have, other members who do similar things for artists visual artists um we have a new member um, who joined yesterday actually and she does something similar for for independent visual artists helping them um get a bit more savvy around business planning and marketing so that's great that's wonderful now i know I you're working that's a very good point sorry mark but uh, that that you make there is is that often creative people do have you know a a different way of, of thinking and working. And that is um, fantastic that we, we need people to be creative and to be artistic. Um, and, and we shouldn't always expect everyone to have all the skills, you know. Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's more successful, isn't it? To, to build a team around you so that each person is working in the area where they've got skills and talent and together they can work together better towards you know uh, um, that ultimate solution yeah I, I use the analogy of a football team when I'm talking about that to, to, to clients if if you had 11 strikers on the field you'd probably lose yes um, <laughs> same with 11 goalkeepers mm. right everyone's got a job to do um, the skills are different um but if you if you're the striker the star of the show you need all of those skills behind you that you don't have and don't need necessarily to put you in the right position to literally to hit the back of the net what a i'm full of analogies today there you go so tell me a little bit about the work that you do for art fest i know they're a, they're a, a client of yours because that will give people an understanding of the of the kind of support that you offer Yes, thank you. It's a nice example. Uh, Upfest is the largest street art festival in, in Europe. They have some 50,000 visitors um, each year. And um, I've worked with the founders there, the co-founders, a husband and wife team for a couple of years. And in particular, there are sometimes I go into a deep dive with them uh, around raising the funding and the finance for that festival. It's, it's a big endeavour. Uh, and it does uh, require some funding from Arts Council England. I've helped them with in particular, but also their crowdfunding, their sponsorship, their earned revenues, the whole mix, um, you know, su such that, you know, we can work together on a structured plan over a couple of years uh, because it's a biennial festival. Um, putting together all of those things that can actually help them raise the money in sufficient time to feel confident in putting together the festival, putting it on, making all of the arrangements and uh, and giving everybody a great time because it's then free to attend for, for all of the visitors who go. Brilliant. That sounds great. Um, yes, we're going to have a further conversation about crowdfunding and, um, and ways in which we can collaborate on uh, you, you, mentioned having an investment fund which would be fantastic um that 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 can support worthy causes um ideally without the red tape involved with with um major grant applications so that's great so john wherever this appears uh, there'll be links to uh, you and your website and your linkedin profile so that other members can get in touch um, and I think sometime next year, it would be great if you would do a, a quick 10 minutes at one of our meetings on five tips for fundraising in the arts, for example, um, because you'll probably know them, which would be great. Yes, I'd be very happy to do that. And, Excellent. And I do have a little bit of material on um, 
YouTube as well, um, because I think sometimes it's helpful, isn't it? Sometimes uh, people like to learn things by reading or looking, yep. but sometimes people like to engage a little bit more with uh, something that's a bit more interactive. But we all have different learning styles, don't we? We do. Yeah, that would be great. Now, this is where the fun bit starts. Okay? Right. I'm going to try and create your perfect cultural year from the answer to 10 simple questions. OK, it's it's my way of pulling out the surprises and the anecdotes <laughs> um, and it, it never fails to. So I'd like I need to get my notepad so I can scribble down your answers. I'd like you to tell me um, if you have a favorite building. Oh, favourite building. Um, certainly have a favourite place. Um, my favourite building. Or one that leads to mind, even. Well, one that comes to mind that I always like to visit when I visit, when I go to London, is Tate Modern. Okay. Um, I love its location right on the South Bank, on, on the Thames. Um, and I like the fact that it's it's um an industrial building repurposed to a modern art format and there's always something new and stimulating to to see there you know i, I, love, I, I love looking and exploring at the collections there there's, there's always something that helps you take a, a different turn of mind or see okay. the world in a different way which is the start of our story OK, so I want you to imagine you're sitting on a bench outside Tate Modern, having spent a couple of hours in there, loving every moment. Um, and you're sitting in the June sunshine in London, overlooking the river and you've got time for a break. And there's a book on the bench next to you, which you've been reading, which you love. What's that book? At the moment, hmm, it's it's probably Stephen Bartlett's diary of a CEO and his thirty three rules for life. Um, it comes to mind because I read it recently, but also it comes to mind because I have a strong feeling it's it's a book I'll be going back to. Um, several times over I do love his podcast and his material because um, even though he's hugely popular and, and, and successful I find there's a modesty in him and I particularly like the way he conducts his diary of a CEO interviews with a wide range of different people and he draws out something really um, really informative from each of those interviews. I feel he really draws people out um, and learning points um, and actionable learning points from, from each interview. Nice, love that. Now on the left side of you on the bench, it's four o'clock in the afternoon on a June warm June day. There's a beverage mm. and you can have anything you like. What's the drink on the left as you're sitting there outside Tate Modern watching the river traffic with the book next to you what's the drink at that particular time i do like my real ales um but a particular thing that i like is um georgian red wine and i say georgian because uh, in georgia they have a different method of making wine that uses the whole grape um and um and the wine is uh is made over many months in a clay buried under the ground um, wow. and allowed to ferment in those conditions. So a very ancient um, but very lovely way of making wine. And, and there's there's no taste quite like it. I'm going to have to investigate that. You know, I said that there would be surprises. Yes, yes. And anecdotes. <laughs> there we go. So there you are. You're sitting very pleased with yourself um because you've had some exciting news you've 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 done the visit to the Tate you're overlooking the river in the summer you've got the Stephen Bartlett book on your left and you're halfway through a glass of um Georgian red wine um and you're 
feeling quite pleased with yourself because you've just heard that a research organization wishes to provide you with an all expenses and highly paid year studying the arts and culture sector and the fundraising landscape in a different country okay should you wish it's a generous grant uh it's board it's irresistible you'll be paid and hosted and asked to come back and report on the arts and culture and fundraising landscape in a different country where would you choose to go that's very interesting i've just um returned actually from the maldives where um i was doing something like that on a very much smaller scale um i i took part in a creative island forum um over a couple of days in in the maldives uh discussing cultural policy and and how we can encourage small island states to um to invest in and adopt creative industries so would you be going or, back to the Maldives or would you want to go somewhere else I um, would want to go um, to somewhere else and I I, I feel Malaysia um okay and, and, and for a couple of reasons and, and one is I have a very good colleague um that I've developed a working relationship with who is based in Malaysia and she shared the pictures with me and I I I love that tropical um uh environment and 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 the beauty of the place uh but but it's it, it has these big large metropolitan centers and i feel um a very interesting culture so malaysia okay uh, is it kuala lumpur that's the capital or is that some is that indonesia i believe it is yes kuala lumpur. Yeah. okay yeah. so you're on the plane on your way to kuala lumpur um to spend your to do your year You've been told that a group of people are looking forward to welcoming you and they're going to give you a week of culture as an arriving kind of setup. Um, however, there is, um, you've been given a letter by the research organization and you've been asked not to open it until you're on the plane. Okay, <laughs> this could be a book. Um, and you open the letter and they've said that one of the conditions of your year your highly paid and expensed year of study is that they'd like to study you while you're away. Okay. And they want to find out what psychological and emotional impact is of restricting your music listening to one genre for a whole year. You can choose the genre. It would have to be classical music. Um, and I think I, I, I do have a very broad tastes and I was on the edge of saying punk music because I'm of that era. You know, uh, I was I was a, a rocker and then a punk in my youth. Um, but um, the, the things that I enjoy, if it had to be just one, mm. uh, it would be classical music um, and um uh, the, the likes of soloists, uh, you know, Nigel Kennedy and 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 the like. Um, Who is also a bit punky. He is, yes. He, he brings together that world, doesn't he? The there you go. There's your perfect. There's your perfect, yes. perfect, perfect stream. Is is Nigel Kennedy? <laughs> yes. Doing, doing the seasons with a plum from yes. about yeah. twenty years ago <laughs> when he was still a bit punky. Love that. Yes. And of course, classical music gives you everything from Thomas Tallis to Hans Zimmer. So, um, exactly. yeah, it's a good, a good shout. Um, okay, so uh, you've arrived in Kuala Lumpur, and your hosts have have met you. Um, you've 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 been business class all the way, uh, first class all the way. So you've had plenty of sleep, um, and they'd like to take you out to um, a performance of dance that evening. Um, but you don't need, but you can decide what it is okay it's kind of it's it's a bit magical this story okay um so you can have any single dancer any dance group or any dance style on the stage in front of you for that performance what would you choose mm. 
it's interesting. My daughter is a very keen dancer and um, her favorite style is contemporary. Um, and I think I would go with that. I think that's what I enjoy the most. There's something about the narrative storytelling that can come through in um, contemporary dance that uh, that I enjoy. Okay, excellent. And they're taking you out to dinner afterwards, your hosts, and you can choose the cuisine. What are you going for? Well, I would go with a traditional Malaysian cuisine. I would really want to uh, try the local food, and I would, uh, and I have a vegetarian diet, so I, I would respectfully ask if uh, they could provide me with some very sort of typical Malaysian cuisine in a vegetarian style. Nice. I heard recently that someone once went into a vegetarian restaurant and asked to see the meat alternative menu. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Ex great. Now that was Friday evening. It's now Saturday and they'd like you to enjoy some sport. Um, and again, it's a rather magical opportunity. You can choose any sport to watch that afternoon. What would you choose? Oh, I'm watching rather than taking part. Am I? You can take you can participate if you wish. What I would love to take part in is uh, and this is a sport I've, I've got into recently. Um, is um uh, hang not, on. It's, it's not dragon boat racing down the Thames, <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's not. Um it's hang on, I've sorry, I've got to remind myself it's um that's okay. For some reason it's gone out of my head. That's that's my age. Um is it a martial art? No, it's a it's it's a water sport. And okay. It is um it's not wild walking. swimming. Wild swimming. I do enjoy wild swimming, um, but is it a team um, sport or a solo <laughs> activity? More, I try, it's wakeboarding. 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 The more okay. I try to think of it, the further it went from my mind. So I'm, I'm like that all the time. Yeah. So wakeboarding. Okay, so that's is that behind so a boat? Me, I should describe it. Yes. Um, often uh, it's. If, if you imagine water skiing, um, uh, but instead of on skis, you're on a board, like a, a snowboard. Snowboard, yes. Yeah. skateboard, yes, uh, on the water. Sometimes you're towed behind a boat. Mm -hmm. and I do it in the middle of the Midlands, it is on a lake, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we are towed by um, a line that goes oh, around. I've seen that. Earth. That looks fascinating. Yes, it, is, it goes uh, it goes all around the, the lake, doesn't it? That's right. That's oh, right. That's great. And it's it's fantastic fun. I really enjoy it. Um, for me, it's more of a summer sport. I'm not so hardy that I get my wetsuit on and do that in February. Um, but uh, it's something I'm really enjoying, and I'm getting good enough to uh, to do the whole circuits, but uh, and and stay on. Um, on the line rather than fall flat on my face and yeah. so starting to pull some tricks is going to be the next thing for me brilliant excellent now um next door to the sports stadium there is um a rather clever uh art gallery it's got a digital immersion space and you can press a button and the entire output of any single visual artist will be projected onto the walls in chronological order so that you can walk around this space and enjoy looking at the the visual or or sculpture uh, visual art or sculpture of any single artist living or dead who would you choose sculptor I, i'm drawn to barbara hepworth um Okay. I discovered a lot more about her work at the at the Hepworth Gallery in, in, in Wakefield. I really enjoyed that, really enjoyed exploring that. Okay, you can have okay. Barbara Hepworth. Yes. Um, now, to lighten the mood, they're going to send you also to a, any play or musical of your choice. Oh. <laughs> um. Oh, any play or musical that's that's 
well, having worked in theatre and, and concert halls, um, mm. yes, that's quite a wide choice for me. Mm. Um, I feel um, I enjoyed Six, the musical. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know that one, The Six Wives of, of Henry VIII. I do. A friend, Natalie uh, Paris, was one of the original six. So, yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I, I did enjoy that. Um, so I will I will go with that. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So you get that. And then the next night um, for your, fi your final immersion um, is a film night. And your your hosts have said you can watch any film you like and ideally one that you would like us to watch with you mm. i think mm, it's interesting be my favorite film i think i would i'd probably go with um uh, an old film that would remind me of sort of growing up and, and the big things, you know, as in my early years were the James Bond films. Um, so, so one of the Sean Connery, James Bond films, maybe Goldfinger. Nice. Yes, money penny. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watched all of those um uh, about six months ago loved it it's great yes excellent john that was wonderful thank you so much we now have a few insights uh that we wouldn't otherwise have gained to finish off we're going to play the this or that game okay oh, yeah you you and I, I i well certainly i remember in my childhood there used to be this tv show where they put a celebrity in front of a camera and the computer would give it two options and had and the celebrity had to choose one or the other yes okay. yes that's what we're going to do. Right. Great. Again, it, it, it's fast paced, no explanations, just take your pick. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Radio or television? Radio. Car or motorcycle? Car. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Dog. Test the water or dive in at the deep end? Or oh, dive in. <laughs> it, you have to as a wakeboarder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Orange juice, bits or no bits? No bits. Library or museum? Mm, museum. Beethoven or Mozart? Mm, Beethoven. Shower or bath? Shower. Cooking or being cooked for? Mm, being cooked for fiction or non-fiction fiction shopping online or in store shopping in store reggae or salsa oh tricky one i love them both um salsa indoors or outdoors outdoors <laughs> yeah more wakeboarding <laughs> um, android or iphone iPhone. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? Oh, start immediately. You are you and I are not alike in that respect. <laughs> Science or history? Science. Sand or snow? Sand. New York or Los Angeles? Mm, Los Angeles. Uh, early morning or late at night? Early morning. Messy or tidy desk? Tidy desk. Planet or wing it? Planet. Bedroom door, open or closed? Mm, closed. Blue roll, over or under? <laughs> <laughs> under. <laughs> Zombies or vampires? Oh, uh, vampires. Red or white wine? Red wine. Georgian, preferably. And Georgian, yes. Batman or Superman? Mm, Batman. Numbers or words? Mm. I work with both very well, actually, but I will say words. Rare or well done? 
Uh, well, um, I would, if if I had to choose, it would be well done. <laughs> okay. Uh, mild or spicy? Uh, spicy. Opera or chamber music? Opera. Stripes or spots? Stripes. And finally, gold or silver? Gold. There's one more. Mm. See the future or change the past? See the future. There we go. Mm. That was great, John. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, I, the feedback I get that is that it's good fun. I should probably get a psychologist to examine your, your answers. <laughs> and um, it's a lovely way of, of other people getting to feel as though they've met you, uh, as I've had the pleasure of doing now. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, contact details will be wherever this appears. But uh, And thank you so much for being one of our full members and being on our mission and uh, uh, so well, don't go anywhere you. but just for the moment um thank you so much john for doing this thank you thank you for the opportunity it's great to speak to you <laughs>